Hello and welcome to NOV Live. I'm Michael Gaines and glad you're joining us today as we continue a conversation about technology and advancements in the oil and gas and energy space and bring you experts and technical insight, subject matter experts to answer your questions and provide uh, a level of uh, perspective that, uh, that we're glad to be able to bring to you. So glad you are joining us today as we have our conversation uh, specifically today around uh, sour service and specifically a sour service offering from Grant Pride Co. So uh, if you are uh, familiar with the space or new, uh, we're glad you're here and look forward to being able to provide some insight for you on today's topic. So uh, before we do that, we are going to bring in Shelly Dumaine to talk about uh, not only the topic, but uh, more specifically how you can uh, weigh in and provide your comments, not necessarily only at the end, but but all throughout our conversation today. Mm -hmm. Hey, Shelby. Hey, Michael. Uh, yeah, so like you said, we we welcome comments um, at any point during the show. We will have a Q&A at the end. Um, but even if you ask a question or have a comment that's relevant to the conversation, we still want to be able to pull you in and uh, feature that so that our audience can be part of the conversation as well throughout the entire show. Uh, I know we had some really great conversation uh, earlier this morning for the Ask Assad show. And, and so I, I have um, high expectations of our audience as always, you never disappoint. So I'm excited to see um, what you have. So like I said, if you have questions or comments, comment them below um, at any point during the show. And then afterwards, if you do still have more questions, more comments for us, or even ideas that uh, we could do for a future episode, there's a couple different ways you can reach out to us there as well. Uh, so the first is you can actually email us. That email is on screen. It's socialmedia at NOV.com. So you can reach out to that, us there. We check it every single day. Um, and then we also have a phone number if you would like to dial in and leave a voicemail. I always like to say you can stay anonymous or you can let us know your name and maybe where you work. And we would love to be able to feature you on a future um, episode. But that number is also on screen now. It is country code plus one three four six two, two, three, four, seven, nine, nine. So th those are all the different ways um, you can uh, uh, reach out to us. As a recap, you can comment below during the show. And then afterwards, you can email us or call us. And um, I know I've mentioned it a few times last couple weeks, but I, I just wanted to highlight also if, uh, you know, coming up this holiday break or, or maybe if you just have some free time and you want to binge past episodes, you can do so at NOV.com slash live. That's where we have all of our past episodes, and uh, you know, just because they're they're past ones, they're maybe not currently live. We're not we're not talking to you there on those past ones. Doesn't mean you can't still get your questions answered. Uh, for any of our past episodes, feel free to email us or call us in with questions, and we would still love to get you in touch with those experts and get your questions answered, no matter uh, no matter the episode. Um, but anyway, so that's all the ways you can uh, kind of get in touch with us and ask us questions. But now is the time of the show where I would like to ask you a question. Uh, so I'm so excited for this week. It is time for the Rig Geek Post of the Week. Rig Geeks Post of the Week. All right. I want to preface this question um, with I, I need I need all of our Rig Geeks in the comments there to, to strap on your thinking caps. We have um, a nice technical question. I think it's really great. And I, I'm really interested to see uh, who can get it or, or who can get close to it. Um, so we're going to pull that question up on the screen and, and we're going to try to, I'll, I'll try to read it slowly since it is, um, there's some different components of it. That way we can, uh, all of our rig geeks have ample time to, to check it out. But we're asking how long would an API G105 material sample last in a NACE test for region three pipe? So if you think you know, we're going to reveal the answer at the end, so we won't leave you hanging. But if you think you know, how long would an API G105 material sample last in a NACE test for Region 3 pipe? I can't wait to see what our rig geeks come up all right. with. Uh, all right, Shelby, I, I had to put on this. I mean, that is a tough one. So my this is my thinking <laughs> cap, a physical thinking cap, because I, uh, I, I, I can't I can't do anything other than that. So, uh, no, that's. <laughs> That's a that's a really good one. I, I like it, man. And I, I know that our guest was really uh, the one to mm -hmm. to help uh, dri drive that. So thanks uh, for that, uh, Shelby. Uh, I'm I'm very much looking forward to. Matter of fact, we might even pull in our guest to uh, defend the uh, the answer once once we get there. So uh, good. All right. Well, thank you, Shelby. 
All right, so uh, as we mentioned at the top of the show, we are talking about sour service and, uh, and an offering from Grant Pride Co. So uh, as we transition to our topic today, uh, we want to uh, play you a piece to help you maybe get grounded and help us all realize that uh, it's, it's really something that uh, is top of mind for many. And, uh, and, and maybe there, this video can help us think about how we approach sour service. Let's face it, selecting drill pipe for sour service is oftentimes a sour experience. Too many options, lengthy testing schedule, one-off customizations. Let's simplify, shall we? We've rethought everything, bringing you six meticulously engineered offerings, delivering the highest strength possible in each NACE severity region, literally pushing the boundaries of what's attainable. We've even pre-qualified four offerings so you can get to work. Select it, install it, use it. Sour service never seems so sweet. All right. Well, to give us some additional perspective on sour service and uh, hopefully uh, some sweet sounds of uh, success, if you do have uh, some sour service applications, we have uh, our guest today, uh, Mr. Uh, Guillaume Plessy. And uh, he is going to be talking to us. He's the director of product management and support within the Grant Pride Co. Uh, team. So, uh, Guillaume, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much, Michael, and good morning to everyone. Yeah, that was a that was a really really creative, innovative uh, uh, approach to a topic that I know you are uh, really passionate about, and I know you and and many others from the Grant Pride Co. team have have spent a lot of time. Uh, investigating and, and looking for ways to to help help those that need help in the the sour service space. So uh, yes, maybe yes. we can start. And I always like to start kind of at a, a a ground level. So you know we're talking about sour service, and maybe some folks have heard about it or or need some additional uh, reminders or perspectives. So could you talk a little bit about why the use of uh, sour service grades? is is important and why why that's something that uh, we should pay attention to certainly michael um <clears throat> initially all starts with uh, formations and and sour fields uh where h2s will be found and is uh, is present that uh, h2s gas is um uh, dangerous for for people uh actually 100 ppm of it is lethal so we have uh, in these fields to ensure that the crew is protected and is not going to be exposed uh, to it um, and survives. Uh, but also the equipment has to survive in this uh, environment. And um, um, what happens with H2S is that molecule breaks into the uh, drilling fluid, into the mud, uh, frees some ionic uh, hydrogen molecules, which are very tiny, can get into the material, and these little molecules will make uh, steel brittle. Uh, so if you can picture it, steel will be as fragile as glass down the hole, and that's not exactly what you want. Um, so um, it, it really boils to, in the end, um, um, a, a risk assessment, um, which the drilling engineers are doing. And um, that graph that we are showing right now is a NACE diagram for uh, uh, environmental severity. It displays the um, uh, different uh, things. On, on the x-axis is the partial pressure of H2S. So it boils to percentages of H2S and the pressure. And on the y-axis is the level of acidity of the medium. So uh, more acidic on the bottom, less acidic on the top. And what you can see is region zero is no problem at all. Don't even bother uh, dealing with the uh, uh, sour gas. It's standard product as usual. And when you get to the region one, two, and three, it is increasing severity. Uh, in region one, uh, your drilling engineer will have the opportunity of selecting a performant product, something which will deliver torque and uh, tension. Um, and then the SSC resistance is less of a concern, but we will bring some SSC resistance. And when we get towards region three, uh, the, that's the, the more severe environments, the SSC resistance is really what matters. 
and the product performances will basically be reduced a little bit. So uh, what the drilling engineer has to do is to find that balance point between performance and SSC resistance. Uh, now, when we talk about the steel grades, not every steel grade is capable of resisting that environment. Some material resist better than others. Um, and that's why we have developed a range of self-service products, uh, which is different from the standard products. Mm. Now, the general trend in terms of drilling is drilling more complex wells, deeper and longer laterals. Uh, that puts more stress on the equipment. And in terms of resisting H2S, the, um, uh, the amount of stress is playing against us. So the more stress in the equipment, coming with a longer, more complex drilling, the more we have to use these material which can resist the uh, uh, environment and the stress combined together. Hmm. So, you know, when you're looking at, and, and so as I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the uh, sulfide stress cracking or the SSC graph that, that you mentioned, and I'm, I'm kind of listening to you and thinking about that, it's like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm coupling that with the fact that if I'm pulling out big picture, you know, uh, providing solutions for uh, sour surface applications isn't something new to uh, certainly to the industry and specifically to, to Grant Pride Co. So what what really precipitated uh, you know, the Grant Pride Co. team? I know that you were probably part of those mm -hmm. conversations as well. What really drove them to uh, have a new offering for uh, a, a, a situation that that we've been able to to help customers with in the past? So that's kind of the historic page here. Uh, we have started many, many years ago with sales service grades. Um, we, we, we had um, limited offering at first, both for Region 3, and uh, we, we basically grew that product line. And uh, a couple of years back, Grand Pridaco acquired Valorec drilling products, and we merged our products together, and we ended up with a lot of grades. Um, simply talking about the drill pipe, uh, grades we have we had over 30 grades and that is just uh, complex to manage uh, for us but it's even more complex to manage for our customers and we thought it was about time to do something there uh, another issue that we had is that Valorec had one approach to that market and uh, which is more like OCTG uh, kind of casing and tubing related and Grand Pridaco on the other had on the other hand, at a drill pipe, which is our core business uh, approach, and they were not exactly aligned. So it took us a bit of time to think where we wanted to be. Uh, and, and I think I was showing that NACE diagram before. This is what we will use as our backbone to place our product offering. And then we have tried to make it relevant based on these different regions. Uh, and that's sort of what Valorec was going in terms of its direction, but we are not completely going that direction. We have brought a twist to it because we're talking drill pipe. We're not talking uh, casing and tubing. Uh, and there is uh, a variation that is something a bit different there. There is drilling mud and we are not forever in a, in a well. So, I mean, you mentioned that uh, in, in essence, a lot of this deals with making sure that we're making it simpler and, and easier for um, for our customers. So so maybe I'd like to dive into that because I know it as and you and I have had conversations offline many a time that every time I, I talk to you, it's, it's always, well, how does this help the customer? How do we start there and work backwards? So can you talk a little more about that? How is this how is this going to help them? And, and maybe we can dive into that a little more. Sure. Uh, I think there are two aspects we are trying to, um, to address with that new product offering. Uh, first of all, uh, helping with uh, the confusion that was uh, going along all these grades and then simplifying the approach. So uh, the confusion thing is taken care of by having uh, less grades offered. And what you see right now is the, the list of six products which have been uh, engineered specifically to cover customer needs. That's what we believe covers best, customer needs um, in region one, two, and three. Um, we, we, are, we hope that uh, less grades will allow more alignment between the pipe owner on the one hand and the uh, 
person who needs the well drill, which is the operator drilling team. Um, we have seen situations when a drilling team will want a certain grade and when they go contract a rig, they cannot get any rig with that pipe on it. Uh, and that's partially due to the number of grades out there. So having less grades will allow for that uh, alignment. Now, the simplicity, I was saying that's the second aspect, will come from also using the regions. Um, by knowing and doing that risk assessment, the drilling engineer will know where he wants to play on that diagram. And then uh, things will get normally simpler because you have pipe for region one, two or three on the rig, and then you just basically can address it this way. Uh, one point I would like to highlight uh, also as we're talking about this, gra this graph is the, the, the field could be very aggressive. Um, if you were to select your casing and tubing, it would be clearly in the red zone in region three. But when you talk about drill pipe, your drill pipe would be surrounded with mud. That mud is cleaned up on surface, reprocessed, the pH is controlled. And if you can keep that controlled environment around your pipe, uh, you actually can select a region one product to drill a well which uh, is in region three from an environmental standpoint. So that's uh, an interesting aspect. And really that's what the, uh, the study, the, the risk assessment is, is uh, your drilling engineers would be doing it. Yeah, wow. So when you uh, talk about, uh, you know, having the simplicity, uh, really looking at making it easier for, for customers to understand and select <laughs> Uh, the proper type of grade. Uh, I think that's that's good, certainly from an operational standpoint, but I know certainly, as always, if, if and even more so in today's market, uh, uh, people are thinking about uh, cost of ownership and how that can help their, their operations as well. So can you talk about how the, the new grades will help customers in, in that regard in terms of ownership and, and costs and, and how that looks? Sure, um, that's another aspect that we had in mind. Um, simplification means potentially better management of our material inventory, having it more available, and, uh, and, and these are efficiencies which uh, our customers could benefit from. Uh, the cost of ownership has been a focus also with our Delta connection, which we launched a few years back, and we are not gonna shift away from that. Uh, one additional thing we have done in that case is use pre-qualification uh, for these grades. And the pre-qualification basically uh, allows us to do the work upfront and not having to do it when customers place the order with us. Um, let me just basically be more precise there. For a relatively low SSC resistance product in region one, um, we will qualify the product at the level of the plant and the installations on which we will uh, manufacture the product. And you can see four uh, white dots between the green and amber uh, areas. These are the test points that we have used for the pre-qualification. And we will redo these qualifications over time to make sure that we are still having a good control on our processes. But the whole idea is that pre-qualification gives us sufficient confidence that we can deliver the product to the customer without having to do the testing at the time of building the product. Um, th this way we save time. Uh, that basically is six weeks of time saving on the delivery of the product. And that also saves money because we don't have to um, spend money to do that test again. And we have is enough confidence that these grades will perform if we were to do an ACE test. So, uh, that, yes. and, and I think that's that's a really key important point to, to bring up because uh, for some that, that aren't familiar, could you just talk to, because you said you're having that, that time savings, not having to, to do that testing. So conventionally, you'd have to do that testing in you know, before you're able to, to ultimately deliver the solution for the, the customer, right? Yes, we actually have to do it for the Region 3 products. Uh, for these products, the SSC resistance is so important that we cannot take the risk of missing something. Right. Uh, however, we've done them for many, many years, and we are so confident in our processes that pretty much it's a 100% success rate in manufacturing. Uh, but we still have to do it to ascertain that the product has got that, uh, that resistance built in. Hmm. 
So for those that uh, may have just joined us in the last few minutes, we're talking with uh, Guillaume Plessy. He is the Director of Product Management and Support with Grant Pride Co. And we're talking about uh, the new sour service, excuse me, sour service offerings from Grant Pride Co. So if you have a question on sour service applications, uh, solutions, or technologies uh, that our guest uh, Guillaume can answer, uh, be happy to have those questions. Uh, even if you think it's, it's one off the wall, I'm, I'm sure he'll be up for it. So feel free to put that in the comment section, uh, whether you're watching us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, or if you prefer uh, a more uh, a robust question and answer, feel free to send us an email. You can send it at socialmedia at nov.com. All right, Guillaume, so uh, want to talk about drill pipe connections. So uh, fun fun topic. I have, uh, I'll say in my almost 10 years in the industry, I've learned a lot and I still feel like I know nothing about, uh, about <laughs> connections, but I know that when it comes to uh, 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 specific applications and especially when you're talking about sour service, a lot of times that is uh, gonna be a limiting factor when you're, of course, talking about uh, torque. So mm -hmm. it's even more important and pronounced when you're talking about a sour service uh, application and consideration. So is is looking at uh, at that space something that that you and the team took into consideration as well when you were looking at the the new sour service offerings? Absolutely, Michael. We we also spent some time uh, looking at connection. And what happens in the area of connection is. Um, to preserve the connection, we have to control the level of stress in it. And to control that level of stress, we have come with uh, a cap on how much preload, that's the maximum makeup torque, we would apply on these connections. Um, what uh, we are doing, and which was working fine for us in the past, has become a problem in the more recent years because we have developed connections which are better connection, which are designed to be preloaded at a higher level. And they are designed in such a way that the stress concentration inside the connection is reduced. So now, if you can picture it out, we have a better connection with reduced stress build up in it. Stress is our enemy when it comes to H2S. And we live by a very old rule we have used in the past, which served us very well. But that is right enter in conflict with these newer generations of connections. And we don't have the full potential of these connections. We limit the potential of these connections. Uh, so we have basically put that on the block and did more testing specifically on the connection to see if we could open uh, the range of torque and increase the preload without putting our customers at risk. And uh, that is um, something we did and which came with uh, uh, the new sets of rules. Uh, the new sets of rules is based on the severity of the environment. So remember the regions we were referring, one, two, and three, and the connection technology. And combining these two, we would allow a certain amount of preload in the connection in that environment. Uh, I've got one example for you here. And in that example, we are showing two uh, torque tension graphs. The blue one is um, a previously used grade, which was our highest strength grade, 125 KSI, uh, with our Delta connection. And the red one is the new uh, 135 KSI grade offering with the same connection. So what you, you can see is by increasing the strength of the pipe from 125 to 135, the elliptic part of that graph has grown. And there is a small amount of increase there. But the most remarkable increase is that near vertical slanted line on the right. Uh, that's basically the potential and the limitation coming from the connection. And we see a 26%, if I remember well, increase there uh, on the torque that the connection can take. So that new offering will allow customers to drill further uh, horizontal wells, much much longer departures, and that's really a great achievement uh, for our side. And I hope that they really uh, will enjoy having that uh, capability now to deliver deeper wells. Mm. So, I mean, th I think we've covered a lot in a, a very short amount of time. So, if you mm -hmm. if you had to 
sort of sum it up for, for folks that either may have just, just joined or for someone that's kind of looking for the, the 25 cent tour, how, how do you explain and, and sum up uh, this, this new offering? Well, okay. Uh, what we have done in that uh, new offering, we've really looked at uh, make it easy uh, for our customers. And now we are doing it easy is by uh, having uh, less grades out there. We're having a smaller uh, offering, which is more meaningful for our customer base and which will allow an alignment between the drilling engineers and whoever owns the equipment, maybe a drilling contractor or a rental company. Uh, we also have helped uh, through that offering, um, making basically the offering a quicker delivery and uh, less cost for the end users. So basically improve the, the cost of ownership for our customers. And, and for every one of these grades, which you can see on that graph for region one, two, and three, uh, we have maximized the performance, both in terms of tension, that's basically the strength of the pipe body, and both in terms of the connection uh, torque, and that's basically the new sets of rule I was just explaining for our connections. Um, so that, that uh, new offering allows uh, customers to very easily select from an environment, environmental severity, uh, one of these grades, and they would come with as much torque and tension as possible, basically, and at the lowest possible cost for our customers. Mm. So for those that uh, are interested in reading a little bit more about this and uh, possibly even getting in contact with you all, I know that that uh, this is important enough to where you, you've created a, a separate uh, or, or standalone web page that, uh, that, that people can get to. Can you share a little bit about that? Yes, uh, we have uh, um, updated our information on sales service on the NOV website and the information could be seen on the um, uh, specific page. Uh, the, the link is nov.com uh, forward slash H2 shield and that will get you to our SaaS service product offering. Uh, we have had quite a bit of coverage also on our uh, LinkedIn um, Grand Pridico showcase page. So there are places where you can find information. And uh, definitely, if you want more information and you don't have all the answers that you need, contact us through the web page. Or if you know someone in our team, uh, contact us and we will be here to help you. Great. All right. Yeah, no, I know that's a, a really great resource for folks looking to get some additional insight into uh, the product. Um, so uh, as, as we wrap up, I know that, uh, that you and the, the, the teams have, have worked uh, extremely hard and, and diligently in developing and coming up with uh, th this new offering. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know that some are familiar with, with some of the uh, capabilities and the testing capabilities that you all have from a, uh, a facility and qualification standpoint. I know that's wasn't a primarily our, our topic, but could you talk just a little bit? Because I think people are always interested to know, you know, your your capabilities in terms of testing and and validation and RD. I know that you all have many dedicated facilities and resources mm -hmm. that uh, that allow folks to be able to do that, or just to be a resource uh, as someone who is interested and maybe not, you know, wanting a little guidance. Could you could you talk a little bit about that? Right. Well, the, about the testing facilities, we have our main uh, uh, test facility here in Houston. Uh, we, we refer it as the ETC. Um, and um, we, we do a lot of in-house developments. Uh, that's where our R&D uh, metallurgists are also uh, based. And um, um, in that particular case, because it's a great uh, validation, it's it's been... Uh, R&D work at the at this head office, but also uh, involvement of our metallurgists in the plants, because we need to basically produce some uh, material, uh, slice it, and then um, do the next testing. Now, the next test is something which we do not do in house, um, uh, because we traditionally uh, rely on third party, and that's kind of uh, what our customers also expect. Uh, but we have done a lot of testing in the last two years to revalidate all of these grades. And uh, uh, that has kept our metallurgy team and uh, innovation team very, very busy for a while. 
as as we can see with uh, our, our conversation today. So that's that's great. Well, I've uh, been speaking with uh, uh, Guillaume Plessis, who uh, is was talking to us today about the uh, sour service offering from Grant Pryco, new sour service offering. And, and Guillaume is the director of product management and support within Grant Prideco. So again, if you have uh, questions or want to find more information on uh, sour service offerings, again, that website is nov.com forward slash H2 Shield, uh, or you can go to the NOV website and type in H2 Shield in the uh, upper right hand corner in the search bar. Yes. So uh, this has been really insightful. Uh, always appreciate learning something new about uh, the offerings of Grant Pride Co. and, uh, and look forward to uh, many more developments as we move into the next year. So uh, Guillaume, thanks for uh, the time today. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Michael. Uh, that was really a pleasure being here with you guys. All right, so before we close out, certainly want to bring Shelby back to get uh, the answer to our Rig Geek post of the week. And yeah, I, uh, I, I have to say, I don't know if my thinking cap uh, really did much for me today because that was a really hard one. And, and I'm gonna preface and say, if, if you didn't get the right answer, we're just gonna blame uh, Guillaume because uh, that was, a, that was a, a tough one. We absolutely could, and and I am we're, so we're going to do the rigby question. Um, but you know me, I, I'm I'm going to advocate for any uh, questions. And we got in the in the last hour here, we did get another question. Oh, great from the audience! So Guillaume, hang on for just a second after we do the rigby. I'm going to pull you back on uh, so that we can get that question answered. I I can't help it. I got I got to get yeah. got to get those audience questions on. Um, but for now, I'll, I'll do the rigby, and uh, we're going to show the question we asked earlier here. It's up on the screen. We asked, how long uh, would an API G105 material sample last in a NACE test for Region 3 pipe? And I did see a lot of our rig geeks. I even saw one comment said, all right, we're ready for it when I when I said it was going to be a, a technical question. So I love the enthusiasm. Um, I saw a lot of really great estimates and guesses. Um, and we have the answer now for you. We're going to show it on screen. So uh, we have that no sample tested uh, exceeded 86 hours. And uh, sour service grade has to exceed 720 hours. Uh, so that was the rig. So some people asking in days, some people asking in hours, uh, but they're or answering in hours. But there we have it. 86. Uh, no sample exceeded 86 hours. All right. Wow. Yeah. Well, that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My my sheet is blank over here, so I've I've got nothing. But uh, I tell you what, we do have. To your point, is uh, a good question. Yeah. I see that in the wings here. So uh, yeah, we thought thought Guillaume was gonna get off scot-free, but not not today. That's right, that's right. Uh, so we have this question, I'll show it on screen here so we all see it. Um, Danielle on uh, uh, on LinkedIn asked, said, hello from Houston. Uh, is it necessary to have sour grade for HWDPs to match the drill pipe? Oh, so the heavyweight, heavyweight drill pipe, that's, uh, that's an interesting one. That is a great question. Uh, thanks, Danielle, for your question. Uh, actually, it's a very good, uh, it's a good practice to also use South Service heavyweight drill pipe grades. Uh, they will suffer from the same uh, H2S embrittlement uh, as drill pipe. They, they are a bit more forgiving because they are using softer material and softer material is less prone to uh, embrittlement. Uh, but we actually have completed our drill pipe offering with uh, three grades of uh, heavyweight drill pipe and the region one, two, and three to go along with the pipe. So we, we believe that uh, it is better to have uh, South Service heavyweight used with the South Service drill pipe, yes. All right. We, well, made, we, made, our, we made our offering complete for that purpose, yes. Ah. Cool. Well, thank you, uh, Guillaume. Yeah, appreciate you hanging in with us and uh, getting that that last question. And certainly appreciate uh, the questions that were submitted. Uh, and of course, as always, appreciate uh, you, the viewer, joining us uh, from all over the world to uh, join us in our conversations every week. So on behalf of everyone here at NOV, thanks for watching and for listening. And we'll talk to you again next time.